Hey everyone, so we're back on the Honda and I'm actually going to put a timing belt on it. Let me show you here real quick. If you look down, you can see how the edge is pretty frayed up. See that? You see the edge here. And not that I think there would be anything wrong with it, but just to, you know, we're this far into it, you know, and, and the belt itself is only like 45 bucks. So at this point, I may as well just throw a belt in it. Um, and then I'm going to take the valve covers off. And I'm also going to take the ends of the cam caps off front and rear because I showed you the oil leaks. And I'm going to reseal them because I, I mean, I don't see any silicone squished out anywhere. So that tells me they didn't put any sealer on this thing anywhere. But whatever, that's what I'm going to be doing today. Uh, I was actually talking with a friend of mine last night, and he says, oh, why didn't you just do a leak down test or, you know, that stuff first? I said, well, because I want to verify what the other person did first. Um, because after the customer had gone back and forth several times, I didn't feel good about what they had already done. And so far, I found several problems just in taking the timing covers off. So potential problems that would, you know, going down the road, cause a failure. So he did point out, he says, oh, you know, doing a leak down test, that'll tell you right away if the valves are open. Well, yeah, it'll tell you if the valves are open. It won't tell you if the adjustment's correct. You could have zero lash in your rocker arms. You know, zero lash adjustment left. But now when the cylinder's at top dead center, both valves are still going to be fully closed. So if you do a leak down test, I'm not going to show you anything. But they could be so tight that, you know, the valves are closed, but as soon as it starts moving, they open up. Now you got a leak. Doesn't mean it's a, pro a failure, I should say, but it does mean that the valves are out of adjustment. You won't find that in a leak down test. You'll only find that by actually checking a valve adjustment. Um, now, if they were so tight that the valves were hanging open, like I said, then... Of course, you'd have a leak and you'd know it. So, but that's what I'm going to get on with today. Like I said, I just ordered a belt. I'm going to throw that on. To do that belt, i got to take this upper mount out now. That one there. The, this piece here that bolts to the block. Because the belt, the way it routes underneath that thing, you'd never get it out. Otherwise, just it's too much of a pain in the neck. So, I'm debating. Actually, I don't have to take the power steering pump out. A lot of times, I take the power steering pump out when I'm doing a pump, when I'm doing a water pump and everything else, just because it makes life easier and it's out of the way. But I don't think I need to bother with that. So, uh, yeah, I still got to take that rear cam bolt out to verify that that cam gear didn't move. But we're going to see. Um, so, I mean, if everything comes out okay, if everything checks out okay, then I'm going to have to go elsewhere. You know, check the uh, O2 sensor. Um, and stuff like that because I mean a single O2 sensor in the front that can cause one entire bank to misfire But like I said, I'm glad I did what I did because now I'm finding problems that the other shop created So all right, we're going to continue with this All right, so I just want you to see this And let's see if you can Look down Oops. Close enough yeah, just a bit. Sorry about that Let me Focus that back in place And there you go, you can see it so the rear cam gear is good, and I've just verified it. So now I don't have to worry about it. I can just get back in there and retorque that and continue. All right, so I got the front valve cover off. And as far as the oil leak goes, I didn't check the valves yet. I still got to get there. As far as the oil leak goes, I can tell you right now, if you look, you're supposed to have sealer in this corner. There's zero here. However, whoever did this job, they decided that they were going to start adding sealer down here. So they put sealer all along the bottom. See it on the bottom of the gasket there? All along the bottom. I mean, these are notorious for leaking there, but when you have new gaskets, they don't leak. But nothing on the top. So, and from what I can tell, from this cam cap here, or whatever you want to refer to it as, I mean, they didn't even clean off the old silicone, for Christ's sake. I mean, that's just... I mean, come on. You can't even clean that off? Make it look halfway decent? I don't know. So, I'm going to take this apart, because I'm going to reseal this. Um, I don't know if they call for anaerobic sealer, or actually silicone. I, I think they call for silicone, but I don't recall. Uh, I have to look it up. But, I'm going to get on and see about adjusting the valves. And I'm pretty sure that this piece is separate from the rocker shaft on this setup. It's been a while since I did one of these. But, 
All right, let me just see. This is, I guess it's got the multi-cylinder, multi-displacement because these two rocker arms are hydraulic uh, latching type rocker arms like VTEC, but why would you have VTEC on one cylinder only? So, all right, well, let me get on with it and see what the actual adjustment is. All right, so I got cylinder four on top dead center. I'm gonna do cylinder four, then five, then six, which is these front ones here. Now, they call for 20 to 24 on the intake, 28 to 32 on the exhaust. 28 to 32, I should be able to move this on the exhaust. I can't even move it. The intake, I can barely move it. So, they had the head machine, they had something done, had the valves done, whatever they did, they never adjusted the valves. So, and you can actually not, I don't see any witness marks at all on anything there. So, I'm assuming they just unbolted everything and then put it all back together. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna adjust the valves up and then go from there. All right, so here I just wanna show you that now I'm on cylinder five, that's an 8,000 feeler gauge in there. That's all I can get in on the exhaust side. And it calls for 28 to 32 thousandths. So all I can get in is an 8 thousandths. So that's, they're tight. They are like way, way, way too tight. There's your misfire. So I'm pretty confident of that. Uh, I'm gonna get these adjusted. And like I said, I only took the one bank off so far because uh, I just wanted to verify that. So I'm gonna do this because they tell you to take both sides apart first and then, you know, you can adjust both sides at the same time. I know this takes longer this way, but I just wanted to verify everything I needed to do on this side first. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm gonna finish adjusting this side. I'm gonna put this valve cover back. Actually, then I'm gonna fix the oil leak over here, put this side back together, and then I'm gonna run over to the back side and do the back side. And on the cam gear down here, if you look, see that number five right there? Can't to focus in on that. That number five lines up with the mark there. That means basically you can adjust cylinder five. And this cam gear has one through six on it. So that's how you know when you can adjust the valves. Well, anyway, that's what I'm doing. So let me keep, keep it going and get this thing done. And you do have to take the whole rocker shaft off. And as I suspected, this is old sealer. They never bothered putting any kind of sealer on here. Nothing. You see they cleaned it, or had it cleaned. But there is no sealer on there at all, hence the oil leak. So, now I'm going to clean it up again and find out what it takes. If it takes anaerobic sealer or just silicone. It might just be silicone, but I'm going to find out. Um, and also, they didn't torque the, sh the that whole assembly down correctly. Some of the bolts were actually just about loose. God, I hate people that don't do the right thing. If you don't know that's one thing but if you're in a shop you should know and the information's out there if you don't know all right let me continue all right so i got the front all back together you can see i cleaned it up there you can see the silicone coming out it does call for honda bond which is the same as um, ultra gray and if you look here on the back head now this is the part that protrudes outside of the valve cover you know down here if you look close, there's zero sealer in there. They never put any sealer in. So in order to get this thing apart enough to reseal it, I gotta take the whole rocker shaft off, the whole assembly. So that's what I'm gonna work on now. I'm gonna get this side apart and get that one done. All right, so the rear rocker shaft is off. And as you can see, that's old silicone on there again. Nothing new. So they just basically unbolted this and bolted it back down. If you look on the head, you'll see there is no sealer, no nothing. So that's why this thing was leaking oil so bad. So now I'm just gonna I gotta clean all this oil mess up and then bolt this back down with new sealer in it. I'm gonna clean that off too. Um, if you guys ever do one of these, you've gotta take it apart. You have to loosen up the bolts slowly. You know, you just basically keep going around and around and around, go like one to two turns each because there's so much tension on this thing. If you left like one bolt in place and you, you zapped them all out, then all of a sudden the whole thing will jump out. You could distort the shafts. So I just gotta keep that in mind. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna clean that up, get this thing bolted back down, 
and then I'm going to adjust all the valves on this side and be done with it. Or be done with that part of it and then put everything back together. All right, so there we go. The new belt is in place. Everything else is in place now. Now here's that, that shim. Remember I said it's concave? If you look, that's the way it's supposed to go. Let me see if I can get up in here so you can see it. It's kind of hard to see. But it puts it away from the belt. If you flip it around, let me see. Good angles I'm going to get if you flip it around. It puts it dead up against the belt. No, that's incorrect. So, that's how it sits. So let's just put the rest of this back together and be done with it. So with all the things I've seen on this Honda where the other shop just didn't do a great job, I happen to notice something else. So I go to put the upper cover on the timing belt right here and you'll notice down there you notice a witness mark on it so I went to go put this harness in place now the harness lines up to this hole but it notches around that bracket right there it's hard to see it like kind of overlays that bracket I couldn't get it in place I'm like what the heck's going on and I realized that bracket was dead up against there Let's see if you can see this. Well, actually, I can't move it now. I did with a little pry bar, but if you look, they never bothered to put the bolt in. The upper bolt for the alternator. It's actually for the alternator bracket, but it wasn't really going to go anywhere, but it was butt up against that timing cover. And like I said, you could see the witness marks on it right there. I mean, just that other shop just did an absolutely sloppy job. But that's what you get when you go, you know, they probably found this shop has probably been doing their work for a while and they're a cheap shop and, you know, and some people think cheap is good. That's what you get when you get cheap. Cheap ain't good. Let's continue. One thing I forgot to show is this is the special tool that holds that crank pulley. You know, it goes right inside that shell of the crank pulley and this way you can fit a socket through the center to get to the 19 millimeter bolt this is what you hold it to you know you hold it with a breaker bar to loosen it and you hold it with a breaker bar to tighten it because when you tighten it you got to go uh, what is it 45 and then like 60 degrees and i tell you what that's 60 degrees that's something else to try to get to uh you just got to put a pipe on a breaker bar and you got to support the breaker bar on this uh, up against like the lower control arm or something it's it's tight so you know one slight ugga dugga to get the bolt off that tells me that guy never tightened it so that's where we're at. Well, it's up and running. Definitely sounds a lot smoother than it did before. Now, audio on the uh, video, uh, audio portion of this, I'm doing it through my camera, is kind of loud, but that's mostly injectors that you're hearing. Uh, but it's definitely a lot smoother than it was before. So, I finished buttoning it up. I still got to put the shields back on, the wheel back on, and do all of that. I'm going to take it for a road test. All right, so how do we make out with the Honda? It's running right now. A minute. It's smooth. You can hear it's quiet. Like I said, the audio in the shop, especially when I have a hood open, it just sounds very loud. It's really not. It's just how the audio comes out. <clears throat> I just took it for a 12-mile road test. I got no codes. This thing would set misfire codes pretty quick, especially, like I said, for one bank. And that's the temporary code list. There's nothing there. The uh, permanent code list. There's nothing there. So I'm on my little street. Let's go for a quick ride. And it's smooth. And when you lean into it just a little bit, you can actually feel the VTEC kick in, which you actually, I realized now that beforehand you actually couldn't even feel it. Um, I think it's because the valves were hanging a little bit. I mean, I'm not full throttle, but it runs fantastic now. Like I said, it didn't run bad before, but it definitely runs fantastic now. So, like I said, the valve adjustment was the issue. Let me 
just come to a safe stop here. Like I said, don't film and drive. Don't text and drive. Don't use your phone and drive. I'm just on my little dead end street. That's the only reason I did it. So that's it. I'm going to call it a success. I'm gonna, I might take it home and you know just drive it one more time, like take it for a long distance ride, but I'm convinced it's fixed. So anyway, that's it. Getting anything out of my videos, hit the like button. If you could, please subscribe. That's about it. Have a great day. Keep wrenching.